Coming up on Valley News Live at 6, a Valley News Live exclusive. We'll show you the video that led to the firing of a Cass County deputy. Plus, how officials in Detroit Lakes responded to the threat of a school shooter. And recent unexpected deaths of local students, putting the focus on mental health. Valley News Live at 6 starts right now. This is Valley News Live at 6. It's video you'll only see here. The Cass County deputy who picked up his kids from daycare after an afternoon at the bar and then crashing his, uh, into another vehicle at a Fargo car wash late this summer has now been fired. Jacob Danielson recently pled guilty to a misdemeanor count of DUI and was sentenced to 360 days of unsupervised probation. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley has been following this story closely and shows you never before seen video of a drunken Danielson picking up his kids from daycare. The first of three videos given to Valley News Live today from August 2nd shows former Cass County Deputy Jacob Danielson struggling to both maintain his balance as well as get his two children in their car seats when picking them up from daycare. After stumbling to put his second child in the car, Danielson walks behind the black SUV and you see it start creeping up the driveway towards the garage. And that's because Danielson never put the vehicle in park. All of this happening while his two young kids are strapped inside. The third video shows Danielson now inside his black SUV, but his head is leaning outside the driver's window. Danielson eventually starts backing down his daycare provider's driveway, but stops halfway down to throw up out the window. Before once again backing out and driving away. A blood alcohol test later showed Danielson at 0.153 nearly twice the legal limit. In Danielson's termination letter written by Cass County Sheriff Jesse Johnner today, Johnner said, quote, Danielson endangered not only other drivers on the roadway, but his children. Later writing, quote, unfortunately, at a time when trust, professionalism, and accountability are more important than ever, Deputy Danielson's behavior jeopardized that trust. In Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Danielson's internal investigation revealed it was actually our investigative reporting that led Cass County officials to dig deeper into Danielson's history as a former officer with West Fargo, only to uncover West Fargo officials failed to give them all the proper documents, highlighting a laundry list of concerning behavior. Now you can read our full story on Danielson as well as our previous reporting. Just go to VNL News app and click on this story. A man is facing charges after two women claimed they were followed and groped in a local grocery store. Court documents say a woman and her toddler son were grocery shopping at Cashwise on September 30th when 37-year-old Kedrick Baker approached from behind and put his hand between her legs. Documents say Baker followed and made threatening comments to the woman's son. Another woman was shopping at Cashwise on the same day when she says Baker also touched her. Surveillance video caught that encounter. At this time, Baker has not been arrested. He'll be in court again next month. Someone's going to shoot up to school. The Al High School. A scary day for parents and students in the Detroit Lakes School District. DL police saying that they had extra officers patrolling the Detroit Lakes High School this morning after receiving multiple alerts to a potential school shooter. The school was notified by police of the anonymous tip sent to our whistleblower hotline. Students also reported seeing a social media post to shoot up the school. Police and school officials say they've identified the person responsible and they plan to maintain a presence at some district buildings. Let's turn our attention now to the weather. Is the cold here to stay? What we do know is that the weather seems mild for now. Here's Hutch with a quick look at tonight's weather. Mike, thanks so much. Good evening, everyone. A beautiful sunset showing up here on our Luther family forward view of the western sky. Now we are also seeing a clearing or at least a breaking up of the cloud deck that's over us here in the valley. Taking a look at temperatures this morning, she was very chilly. We had some teens out there as we look out toward the Langdon area. It was very cold also out near Wadena with temperatures there that were mighty chilly. The satellite radar shows that that clearing is taking place in eastern North Dakota, but we do have some showers of snow heading into the arrowhead of Minnesota. That's where the best chance of clouds will be this evening. We're back in the 30s after kissing those low 40s today. It's going to be another cold night, and once again, we could see some morning temperatures in those teens. 
But for this evening in the FM area, make sure you have those jackets handy. Light winds, decreasing clouds and temperatures diving into those mid 20s as we go through the deep overnight. We'll talk about a nice warm up heading our way. I'll have details on that here in just a couple more moments. All right, thanks so much, Hutch. Fargo police say they have issued more than 70 speeding citations over the course of a week. Chief David Zabolski says that there has been increased speeding enforcement on 10th Street North. He says the department is working on some new tactics to help control the racing and speeding in the city, including creating a legislative solution. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz convened the first Council of Governors meeting under the Biden administration. Governor Walz was appointed to serve as a co-chair on the council, which consists of 10 bipartisan governors. They're responsible for advising the Secretary of Defense and the Secretary of Homeland Security on matters related to the National Guard and civil support missions. After 24 years in the Army National Guard, Governor Walz achieved the rank of Command Sergeant Major and was the highest ranking enlisted service member ever to serve in Congress. Today, another area school district had to inform families of the tragic and untimely death of a student. It's a problem health experts in the Valley say parents need to address. Valley News Team's J.C. Dodd spoke with a psychiatrist on how an unexpected loss of a classmate can take a toll on students' mental health. Today, Cheyenne High students learned they had lost one of their own. In an email to parents, administration says sophomore Caden Steiner died. And just last month, 13-year-old Horizon Middle Schooler Jacoby Blake took his own life. The world isn't the same place it was, you know, almost two years ago. Local child psychiatrist Douglas Hess says kids are struggling now more than ever when it comes to the loss of a friend, classmate, or neighbor. Uh, Fargo-Moorhead's a small community, so they'll probably have known of the person. Dr. Hess tells parents. Ask them how that's affecting them. Are they doing okay with it? West Fargo school officials say they've established a safe space at Cheyenne for students and staff to go when they want to speak with someone or to just have a quiet moment between classes. Look out for each other. You know, if you think somebody's not doing well, ask them. They might tell you. Moorhead school officials say as their community continues to grieve, teachers have been given tangible ways to support students. Dr. Hess says the kids he treats now struggle significantly more with mental illness than he's ever seen seeing a 50% increase in adolescent patients. More chronic suicidal thoughts. He adds parents should continuously check on their kids and have these tough conversations. So they should really worry about their kids. Um, always, as I think all parents do, but it may be a little more heightened after unfortunate events. So. In Fargo, J.C. Dodd, Valley News Live. And the cause of the death for the Cheyenne sophomore has not yet been released. More than 90 countries have signed the Global Methane Pledge, which requires a 30% cut in methane emissions by 2030. The pledge, which was one of the Biden administration's priorities, includes six of the 10 largest methane emitters and about 45% of global methane emissions. But some critical countries still haven't signed, including Russia and China. And here at home, some local leaders don't support the push. North Dakota Congressman Kelly Armstrong tweeted the rule will not lower global emissions. He said it will stifle innovation in states like North Dakota that already regulate methane. Senators Kramer and Hoven also voiced their opposition, saying that the gas capture rate in North Dakota is 94 percent and that President Biden is undermining domestic energy production. Republicans say the new EP rule is ill-timed as Americans are dealing with high prices at the pump and on their home energy bills. In addition to the pledge, Democratic lawmakers are working on legislation to impose a fee on excessive emissions. Coming up later on Valley News Live at 6, how Minnesotans are managing their carbon footprint? And today's high temperatures, well, beat my expectations here in Fargo and Grand Forks. Low 40s for us, 30s elsewhere. We're watching a chance for some snow. A big system could be heading our way. It's next week. All we'll details in your warm up, and we'll talk a little bit about this system here in a minute.